This video is sponsored by Sketchfab. Stick around to see how you can get high quality 3D models for free. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at Reality Scan. Reality Scan is a brand new mobile app that is now available in beta from the folks at Epic Games in collaboration with the folks at Quixel. So sometime last year we mentioned that the folks at Epic Games did purchase Reality Capture, a tool that we've discussed on the channel and it's a wonderful one for creating photogrammetry. And now they're baking most of the cool features that you have in Reality Capture into this mobile app called Reality Scan. This tool is currently available for iOS device users and an Android version is coming soon. Today we're going to take a look at a couple of things that deals with how you can scan, what to expect, how to work around a couple of errors and to compare this to some other 3D scanning tools that exist and of course mention a cool tool for Android users just in case they would like to get into photogrammetry. So if you're an iOS device user, you need to go over to the link in the description as there's a limited number of beta testers for this. So the minimum number of people that can join the beta testing is 10,000 and this offers you a chance of having a Sketchfab Pro account. So to get started, you need to install TestFlight. With TestFlight installed, working with this is super easy. Once you open up the app, you can see that the user interface is extremely easy and you can start creating things really, really quick. By holding down the shutter button and going around the model in 360, you can generate images and automatically convert those to point clouds and from point clouds, you can proceed to get this as 3D models. It is as easy as that and at the same time, it is not as easy. So if we take things step by step, how this app works is pretty interesting. First off, you need to have an internet connection. An internet connection is one of the major things you need owing to the fact that this tool is heavily reliant on your connection and that is how it aligns the images and creates point cloud that in turn gives you a mesh. So to each image you capture, these images are synced online or should I say uploaded online and alignment actually starts happening there. If you're thinking about capturing multiple stuff, you need to go around the model a couple of times and the more quality images you feed to this, the more quality you get at the end of the day. Capturing indoors might not be a good idea, especially if you're capturing smaller objects as this doesn't really do well with small objects in the first place. If you also want to capture bigger objects, it is worth knowing that you need to capture bigger objects with better lighting as this tool also doesn't do well with low light. So you need a well lit model to get things to work, else you might probably not be able to get a large model scanned properly. Now with the lighting part out of the way, if you start capturing, there's a couple of things you would notice. First off, you would notice that a couple of images may have yellow or red outlines. Now the white outline images simply means that they are aligned properly, the yellow ones are not aligned properly, the red ones probably did not upload or they probably have errors on them. You need to actually pay attention to this while capturing your model, else you might fall into that trap of capturing stuff and not seeing anything at the end of the day. So with that done, it is also worth knowing that the app offers you a very wonderful cropping tool that you can use to crop just the part of the model that you want to mesh. So instead of meshing an entire estate, you can just mesh just the very tiny stuff that you've captured. And this is quite intuitive as you can rotate it and stretch it and create some bounds based on the object that you want. And once you're ready, you can now proceed to start meshing it. Now, for those who are thinking about meshing these and seeing that beautiful capture that they have, it doesn't work like that. Once you're done meshing this, you would not be able to see the textures on your viewport or, you know, on the canvas that you're looking at. You actually need to upload this to Sketchfab before you'll be able to see this. And it is quite impressive the quality of thing you'll be getting on Sketchfab. By no means should you think that you'll be getting as much of a high quality like what has been demoed, but then you can push the bounds of what you can create with this. There are actually two things to mention about capturing. You don't need to dismantle or move away from where you're capturing your stuff or in this case, you know, dismantle your capturing stage and then, you know, expect this thing to align properly. It will not do that. So if you like to capture stuff and get them looking exactly how you want, you have to keep the model and the stage exactly how they are for the alignment to be done before you can proceed to start getting the object meshed out. Another thing is if you're capturing your object, you need to stick to it in the sense that once you're done capturing, don't move away from it. You have to stay there more like what ties with the previous guideline. You need to stick to the model to get the alignment done, then the point cloud and the meshing. So 
it makes sense to see that once you're trying to capture large stuff, you can capture large stuff, especially when you're outdoor, but indoor stuff in most cases do not cut it. Another thing that I think is worth mentioning is if you're capturing stuff outdoor, depending on the scale of what you're capturing, you probably would not be able to crop things around and get them to, you know, compress just that part that you want. You might actually need to rely on the AI to understand that this is the subject area that you're capturing and then it can proceed to crop that part out for you. Now, with all that said, this app is pretty fast once you're capturing stuff. The only time you'd have to spend is moving around the model and paying attention to what you're capturing and understand which angle has been aligned properly before you move on to point cloud and then finally meshing. But then, well, if you compare this with a tool like the 3D Scanner app, there is just a lot of things that you would want in a tool like this. First up, the 3D Scanner app actually displays what you're doing on your canvas, on your viewport, you know, on your camera, so you can see what has been captured and what hasn't been captured. Secondly, with the 3D Scanner app, you can also see the texture directly on your viewport. So you can see what the texture looks like when you're processing this, and you can now proceed to either use this as an AR element, you can download this if you like to, you can also share this on Sketchfab. But regardless of this, these are things that I would like to see come over to the Reality Scan later in the future, as this is currently in beta. One more thing that I would really love to see is if you're working with the reality scan, like we mentioned earlier, a bit sketchy, you need an internet connection. And this might not be like the nicest tool to have at this point if you are thinking about capturing stuff on the go. Most of the times you might either be in a place where there's no internet connection, you probably don't have a Wi-Fi connection and you like to capture something for memory sake and you might need to capture these things by simply using the reality capture and converting them to 3D models. But then, if you don't have an internet connection, you'll be stuck to just taking pictures. And even at taking pictures, the reality scan do not save these pictures in a place where you can see them on your mobile device. And this is actually one thing that tools like the 3D Scanner app actually does very well that I'll really love to see come over to reality scan. And of course, for the Android users, there's a beautiful tool called Kiri Engine which you can use to capture stuff and it is just amazing to see the kind of things that you can do with it. So for those who like to take a look at that one as well, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can check it out. So this is more like it. For those who are thinking about getting into this and picking it up and working with it, you have an opportunity to catch up with this thing right now if you do own an iOS device and you can start getting into uploading photogrammetry over to Sketchfab and stand the chance of having a Sketchfab Pro account for one year. Speaking about Sketchfab, for those who like to download free 3D models or probably you're looking for a place where you can preview your 3D models before you download them, see all of the properties that makes up this model, you can simply go over to Sketchfab right now and start downloading some stuff. If you're also looking for a place where you can sell your own 3D models, then Sketchfab is the home for you. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, a huge shout out to the folks at Epic Games and Reality Capture in collaboration with Quicksell for making this possible. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.